So number one, which is the common name of Capra Hircus? A, domestic goat. B, domestic sheep. C, domestic buck. Or letter D, domestic buffalo. So again, in the field of animal science, since one of the competencies uh, highlighted by PRC when it comes to let in your specific major, ang parang isang, isang inilagay dito is breeds of animals, di ba? So, uh, it's, it, it is very important for you to have an idea on the scientific names ng mga iba't ibang hayop, so specifically mga farm animals. And later, we will also go through uh, scientific names of plants and even pathogens. Yeah. Okay? So, the correct answer is Tama kayo, letter A, which is domestic goat. Okay, so uh, I will flash this slide. Ayan. So you can take note of the different uh, scientific names ng bawat farm animals. So I'm, I will give time for you to take note itong mga to kasi hindi ko alam kung yung meron yata kasi mga iba na ang inavail lang ay itong final coaching so I will give you time to copy this so ang cattle ay boss taurus Carabao is Bubalus Bubalis. Uh, horse is Equus Caballus. Uh, swine is Suscropa. Sheep is Ovis Aris. Ayan. And goat is Capra Hircus. So sa pool 3 naman, we have chicken. Uh, Gallus Gallus. Mallard duck. Ayan. So in sa duck, meron tayong dalawang klase na duck. We have the mallard and the muscovy duck. So, Kapag mallard duck, the scientific name is Anas platerincos, whereas in for Muscovy duck, Kairina muscata. So for goose, we have Anser domesticus. Quail, we have Cotornix cotornix. Turkey, we have Meleagris galopago. And rabbit, we have Oryctolagus cynthus. And copy this Okay. All right, next. Ayon, if you can notice dun sa ating question, nakalagay dun is domesticated, di ba? So ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng domesticated? Or domestic, ayan. So 
in our choices, makikita nyo na alagay domestic goat, domestic sheep, domestic buck, domestic buffalo. So what do we mean when we say domestic? Ayan. So here, I have two pictures. So domesticated animals are animals that have selectively bred and genetically adapted over generations to live alongside humans. So ang kabaliktaran ng domesticated ay wild. Kapag sinabi domesticated, ito na yung nagkaroon na ng intervention ang humans sa breeding nila. Which means, if you can look at the pictures above, yung nasa, ano daw dito, itong nasa right, this is the domesticated goat. And this is the wild goat. The main difference na pwede nating makita dito eh ang sa, ang sa wild goat, sobra sa wild goat ay sa wild goat ay sobrang haba ng kanyang horns. Whereas dito, relatively mas maliit na siya. So, the the breeders or humans are considering this para hindi magkaroon ng sakitan kapag nandun na sila sa kanilang kulungan. So, that is why nangyayari yung uh, ganitong classic breeding, yung pinapaliit, yung uh, horns, ganyan. And this is true not only sa goats, but even in other animals. They are also being bred uh, based on the cultural methods kung paano sila i-grow sa isang kulungan. So, Ayun yung major difference nila. So, they are genetically distinct from their wild ancestors or cousins. So, ito ang domesticated at ito naman ang wild. So, ito wild ang tawag dito. Ito yung domesticated. Okay? So, eh. Okay na ba? So, let's go to number two. So which type of soil has approximately 20 to 40% sand, 18 to 52% silt, and 27 to 40% clay? Okay, so if maalala nyo in our soil science session, may sinabi akong technique dito para ano? So A, clay loam soil, B, silt loam soil, C, sandy loam soil, or letter D, uh, sandy soil. Ayan, so, 20 to 40% sand, 18 to 52% silt, and 27 to 40% clay. So the answer is letter A, which is clay loam soil. Wait lang, nagkakaroon ng difficulty yung isang sampang soil. Okay. So ito, ito nasa gilid, ito yung tinatawag nating uh, the soil type. Wait. Soil type triangle.
Okay, let's go back. Okay. So dito, in this triangle, kailangan nyo lang, hindi nyo kailangan i-memorize to lahat. Hindi nyo kailangan i-memorize to lahat. All you need to do is to remember kahit isang part lang yan. And I suggest na ang, i, uh, na ang inyong tandaan ay ito. Itong sand. Kasi ito, ito ang pinakamadaling i-visualize. Imagine nyo lang na ang sand ay mas malalaki yung particles nila, di ba? Kaya mong kumuha ng ilan lang na piraso ng sand sa, sa iyong kamay. So, ang titignan nyo na lang kapag nasa question na kayo is yung sand na percentage. So, in this case, it is 20 to 40% sand. Ngayon, paano ginagamit itong triangle na to? So if you are in the specific field, if you are in a in a field tapos you are doing uh, soil analysis ganyan. Ang ang nangyayari dito ay ganito siya gamitin. So we will use yung tatlong sides niya. Pero ito ay kulay yellow na lang yung gamitin natin color coding. Dito ay orange, dito ay yellow. Okay? So ang sabi, 20% to 40% sun. So, ibig sabihin na andito siya. 20% to 40%. So, if you will look at that, ganyan. So, andito sa sa part na to. Diba? Then, 18 to 52% silk. 18 to 52. Paano ginagamit ang 18 to 52? Dito. Wala naman dito. So, 18 to 52. Two. So, mga dyan siguro. So, ganun. So, that range. Tapos, 27 to 40% clay. 27 dito. Mga dito banda. 2. Sabi 40, 40%. 40 clay. Yeah. So, kung saan nag-intersect yung tatlong yun, doon ang doon yung uh, doon ang answer natin. So, tignan natin dito. Nag-intersect silang apat dito sa space na to. Kasi ang apat silang tatlo. Okay. So, the answer is clay loam soil. Ang, ang tatandaan nyo lang kapag, uh, for example, kapag silk Silk loam, ang sand niya is zero. Zero hanggang mga dito. Eh, silk loam. Zero to 50. Mas, maha, mas, ma, mas, ma, mas mataas ang range. Zero to 50, silk loam pa yan. Ayan. Kapag 50 onwards, ayan. so ang, ang pinakaano na yan, kapag 50% onwards na sand, sand something na yon So, it can be sandy loam or sandy soil. Ang sandy soil, of course, kung makita nyo, dito na siya sa pinakadulo. Nasa mga 90% na siya. Diba? So, kapag nasa gitna lang yung sand, like, yun na, 20 to 40% sand, that is clay loam. Okay? So, that's how you you will answer yung mga ganitong klaseng questions. Hindi, hindi nyo kailangan i-memorize or hindi kailangan mag-drawing ng ganito. So, you just need to look at yung sun. Okay? Okay. So, item number three. Which is the transfer of pollen from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower in separate plants? So again, it is separate plants. A, self-pollination. B, cross-pollination. C, monopollination. Or letter D, dual pollination. So the answer for this one is letter B, which is cross-pollination. So the keyword that you have there is separate plants. When there is, when there is a transfer of pollen mula sa anther to stigma, ang anther, ito ang Male or female? Ito ang male. 
stigma itong female na part na flower. Okay, so ang male part is yung anther, ang female part is yung stigma. So, para nagkaroon ng transfer, that itself is called pollination. So, that itself is called pollination. Ngayon, ang pagpipilian na lamang dito is kung self-pollination ba siya or cross-pollination. So, for us to understand this one further, let me uh, discuss both concepts sa inyo. So kapag sinabi nating self pollinate kapag sinabi nating self pollination it is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma pero ito ay nasa same plant ito ay nasa same plant if we will contrast it doon naman sa cross pollination it is still the transfer of uh, pollen grains from anthers to stigma. Pero, ang difference nila ay ito ay nasa different plants. So, kaya siya cross-pollination. So, kapag self-pollination, ito ay nangyayari sa mismong flower ng iisang uh, plant lang or iisang flower lang. Pero if this, if it happens between a flower of a plant to another flower from another plant, that is cross Pollination. Here is a graph. Ayan. So, ang tignan natin sila, i-close up natin siya. So, sa self-pollination, kita nyo, isa lang yung flower. Isa lang yung flower. Tapos ito, yung, itong number one, it is the pollen grains. Ayan. Ito yung pollen. Tapos kapag ito from the anther, napunta siya dito sa stigma, ayan, that, is, that is pollination. Ngayon, kapag ito ay nangyari sa isang plant lang, sa isang plant, sa isang flower lang, sa isang plant, that is called self-pollination. Ngayon, kung titignan natin ang cross-pollination, if you will observe, dalawa yung flowers. So this is flower one, this is flower two. And this must be from different from different plants. So same, same yung illustration. And dito pa rin yung anther. Ito yung anther. Ito yung pollen grains. Tapos pupunta siya sa stigma na ibang plant. So that is, that is cross pollination. Uh, so, ayan. Okay. Oh, ay, ito. So, paano nangyayari ang cross-pollination? So, it can happen through pollinators. So, what are the known pollinators? Pwede itong butterflies, or any insects. Wind. Pwede rin wind. Pwede nga rin water kapag nasa may bandang ilog yung mga flower. Yeah. Wind, water. And of course, human. Yung human, kapag nagkakaroon tayo ng intervention, kapag tinatransfer natin yung mga pollen grains. So that is considered as cross-pollination. So I hope that this one is clear. And self-pollination, isang flower lang in the same plant. Cross-pollination, two flowers in different 
plants. And it happens through pollinators such as butterflies, insects, even the wind, water, and of course us humans. All right. So before we move to our item number four, let us have a quick five-minute break kasi alam kong medyo marami na yung concepts na na-discuss natin. We have tackled animal science from item number one. Ayan, so we have this different uh, scientific names ng plant. We have also tackled domestic animals versus wild animals. Again, ang difference nila kapag sinabing wild animals, ito yung hindi pa na-breed ng mga uh, or, or hindi pa sila naka-adapt in a production level. Ayan, so hindi sila selectively bred. Ayan. So whereas yung domesticated ay na yung uh, binread na siya tsaka nakapag-adapt na genetically sa condition na fit sa uh, sa humans. Like kung ano yung mga kilala nating goat ngayon, ayun sila. Ayun ang mga uh, domestic animals. We have also tackled soil science. So in soil science, in identifying the type of soil, kapag mayroong ganitong question, ang, ila, ang kailangan nyo lang i-memorize or ang kailangan nyo lang tingnan or isipin is kung ilang percent yung sand nila. Kasi doon mas madali nyo makikita kung saan siya banda. Kapag nasa lower lower portion, 0 hanggang 50, it could be silt, silty. Kapag nasa gitna, clay. Kapag nasa dulo, sand. So, 0 to 50, silt. Uh, 20 to 40, clay. And 50 onwards, it could be sand. All right? And of course, we have also tackled crop science. In item number three, we have uh, the difference between self-pollination and cross-pollination. Again, kapag sinabi natin self-pollination, it is the transfer of pollen grains from the anthers or yung male uh, flower, male reproductive organs in flowers to the stigma, which is the female reproductive organs in flowers. Kapag sinabi sa pollination sa same na plant, isang flower, isang plant. Kapag cross-pollination, dalawang flowers, different na plant. Alright? So, before we continue, let's have a five-minute break.
Okay, so let's go to number four. So if you remember, meron na akong parang sine, para. Meron na sine sa GC dati, di ba? Like uh, PDF on duck production here in the Philippines and also sa milkfish, yung sa bangus natin. Meron na akong sine. So uh, here in commercial duck hatcheries, when is sex determination of ducklings done? So A, one to two days, uh, two to three days, three to four days, or four to five days. You can answer sa ating chat box. Okay, so the correct answer for this one is letter B, which is two to three days. All right. So, dito, uh, this is from uh, from Department of Agriculture sa uh, Cagayan Valley. So, in all commercial duck hatcheries, determining the sex of duckling is done at the age of two to three days. So, again, lagi ko sinasabi sa ating mga sessions na Sana meron kayong like notes or kahit isang paper man lang tapos inililista niyo doon yung mga different values katulad nitong katulad nitong mga to most speci most specific specifically <laughs> sa animal science, 'di ba? Ang daming values diyan. Kunwari ilan ang uh, ilan ang gestation period ng uh, baka Diba? Ilang days yon So I hope na meron kayong na gumagawa kayo ng mga reviewer na puro numbers yung nandun. Diba? Para at least meron kayong isang source lang na okay. So ilang araw, ilang buwan, ilang linggo ang mga processes na ito. Later, meron tayong mga items dyan on ilang araw or ilang weeks ang, ang, ang incubation ng uh, egg. Yung mga ganun na mga bagay. So, I hope you have that. Yung ganun klaseng reviewer. Para dun yung ilalagay itong mga ito. Okay? So, ayan. Two to three days ang answer dito. Okay? Let's go to uh, soil science again. So, macronutrients which plants need in greater amount include A, calcium, potassium, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Uh, B, magnesium, sulfur, potassium, manganese. C, nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus, and potassium. Or, and, or letter D, sulfur, phosphorus, potassium, and iron. So the answer for this one is letter C, which is nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus, and potassium. So again, here is a table displaying the different macro and micronutrients needed by our plants. So kapag sinabi natin macronutrients, these are uh, elements or these are nutrients that are needed by our plants in greater amounts. Kasi ito ay kanilang kailangan sa kanilang mga biological processes. Which means na ito mga ito ay nakukonsuma, nakakonsumo agad. Okay, so in micronutrients, ang nasa listahan natin is of course yung NPK or yung nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And meron din dun yung calcium, magnesium, and of course carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. Okay. So ang pinakakailangan dyan ng ating mga halaman ay ang NP and K. That is the reason why if we are looking for the best, for example, if you will argue na, okay, letter A. Yung letter A, nandun naman yung calcium, ah. macronutrients naman siya, potassium, nandun din, hydrogen, nandun din, tsaka nitrogen. So but hindi siya yung answer? Remember that in examinations like this, we are looking for the best answer. And that is something that you always need to uh, look when uh, assessing the choices. Alin dito ang pinaka-best? So of course, kaya ko siya inilistang ganito kasi ang mas kailangan ng mga uh, plants natin is NPK. And that is the reason why karaniwan ng mga fertilizers natin ay NPK. If you are familiar, if you have already seen uh, yung mga sako ng 
yung mga fertilizer. For example, may mga nakikita kayo doon. 14, 14, 14. Diba? Merong mga ganyang sako ng fertilizer. Yung bawat number na to, it corresponds to itong una is N, yung pangalawa ay uh, phosphorus, and yung pangatlo is potassium. So, if we are looking for macronutrients which plants need in greater amount, this would be uh, NPK na present dito, NPK, and of course, yung potassium. So, remember that, na when looking for answers, kailangan yung best answer ang ating uh, pupunta. Or ayun yung ating pipili. So you can also take note of this one. Itong table na to. Sige. You can copy it. Tapos ilalagay ko na lang yung shortcuts nila. O ano yung mga chemical symbols nila. N T K C A N G C H O So for Iron is F E, manganese M N, boron, molybdenum, uh, copper C U, zinc Z N, chlorine C L, nickel N I, cobalt E O, sodium and silicon. Okay, so take note of those nutrients. Right? Another one minute. Okay, so let's move to number six. Okay. Number six, which breed of chicken is not under the fighting class? So A, Rubble or Ruble. Uh, B, Hulsai. C, Claret. Or letter D, Road Highland Red. So which is not under the fighting class? The answer for this one is letter B, which is Rhode Island Red. You will notice in the pictures in the, in the right side of the screen, ito yung letter A, which is Ruble. Ruble ba or Rubble? A, and then this is full side. This is letter C, Claret. This is letter B. If you will notice, ang um, main distinction ng fighting class at saka ng hindi fighting class ay yung kanilang tails. Nakikita nyo dito, malalago yung tails ng first three, which is yung Ruble Hulsai tsaka Claret. And dito naman sa Rhode Island Red ay hindi masyadong na. So uh, another tip that I have for uh, you is to search for uh, breeds of chicken Hindi lang chicken, but even other breeds. Later, may mga i-display ulit ako dyan na mga salmon. Ano pa ba? Ay, salmon. Ano pa dito? Prawns. Wala yata yung salmon. Hindi ko na ilagay sa, sa session na ito. Uh, goats. Yeah. May mga i-display ako dyan. So, ayun nung kailangan yung, or kailangan, or it is advice, I really advise to look at pictures para at least kapag kunwari, which breed of chicken has a brown, golden brown appearance, which is a fighting class. So, kapag itong picture na to is inyong alam, madali kayo makapagsagot na ah, ano yan, full sa iyo. Number seven. What is the business of catching Handling, taking, marketing, and preserving of fish and other fishery products. So A, is it fishery? 
B, aquaculture, C, fish cultivation, or letter D, fish culture. So we are in the field of fisheries. The answer for this one is letter A, which is fishery. So dito sa question na to, you, you, you actually have a context clue. Sinabi lahat ng proseso, which means it is a general uh, term. Ang hinahanap ng question na to is a general term because it encompassed uh, the catching, handling, hanggang preservation ng fish and other fishery products. So doon pa lang makikita natin na ah, hindi, hindi, hindi lang to cultivation, hindi lang to culture. So yung distinction din ng aquaculture, di ba? Kapag aquaculture, rearing in a controlled environment, di ba? Aquaculture, uh, parang yung sa Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, they are growing fishes for for production then uh, in controlled environments. So, pwede controlled or semi-controlled na environments kapag aquaculture. But this one, it uh, is asking for the business, the business of catching. So, the more... Uh, general term is fishing. Okay. Number eight. So what process of soil cultivation is done towards the base of the plants? The base of the plants, A, of body, B, plowing, C, healing up, or letter D, harrowing. <clears throat> So number eight, uh, A of burying, uh, B plowing, C healing up, or letter D harrowing. So done towards the base of the plants, the answer is letter A, which is of burying. Okay, so here are the different definitions of the terms that I mentioned sa choices. So, so yung of burying, ayan siya. Uh, it is the operation that cuts and throws the soil away from the base of the plants. So, parang binubungkal, tapos tatanggalin. So, ang sabi dito, this is the reverse. So, ito yung kabaliktaran ng middle breaking or healing up. So, if ito contrast natin sa healing up, from the term itself, healing, earthing up, or pinapile. Pinagpapatong-patong ang... Uh, ang soil papunta sa ay around the base of the plant. So, hindi siya uh, ano ta, away from the base of the plants. Okay? So, ang plowing naman, plowing is a simple uh, but effective farm practice that cuts, granulates, and inverts the soil. So, ang plowing, ito yung parang pag, pag, uh, pagpulbura ng lupa. And of course, yung harrowing is somehow next sa ating uh, next sa plowing. Ito yung next step. Ayan. Ito naman ay it will break up the soil. Digging up weeds and shallow rooted grass. So digging up clumps of soil. It means binibreak din niya yung mga malalaking bloke ng soil sa isang farm. Right? So you, you should also study this different terms kasi ito ay nasa uh, crop science, specifically sa land preparation. Ito yung mga ginagawang operation bago magtanim na uh, mga halaman natin at saka kapag nandun na rin yung mga halaman natin. Okay? So take, uh, also take note of these different terminologies. Okay, number nine. Uh, which term is applied to a group of organisms with the specific characteristics that distinguish them from other groups within that species? So A, inbred, uh, B, crossbreed, C, breed, or letter D, hybrid. So yes, the correct answer is letter C, which is breed. All right, so... Uh, breed, it is the general term that we use to describe that. Yung group of organisms na merong specific characteristics. So, so uh, organisms that are in the same breed have the, uh, the same characteristics as well. So let us define the different terms that are also in the choices. 
So first, let us go to inbreed. So actually, inbreed is not a term to describe like a group of organism, but instead it is a term used to describe an organism that has undergone inbreeding. So kapag sinabi natin inbreeding, ito ang uh, pagmimate ng isang organism sa closely related na organism. Then. For example, in this uh, illustration, we can see there that we have this dalawang parents. Yeah. So parent A and this is parent B. So ang nangyari dito ay si parent A nagproduce sila netong ito si letter na lang gamitin. A, sige, A, B, tapos na natin ito si AB. So nagproduce sila neto. Tapos ang ginawa is pinagbreed siya in breeding sa organism na parehas ng characteristic which is close, closely related. And in this case, ito ay kanyang kapatid, di ba? Kasi ito yung parents nila, ito yung, kan ito yung kanilang kapatid. This is the F1 generation. If you will remember from our uh, past sessions, I, I discussed this one. So this is the parentals, tapos ito yung kanilang anak. Sige, anak na yung lagyan natin para mas maintindihan. So it, ito yung kanilang mga anak. So itong dalawang parents na ito, meron silang tatlong anak. So itong anak number one, anak number two, tapos anak number three. Tapos ang inbreeding from the definition itself, mating or breeding individuals that are closely related genetically. So here, pinagmate nila yung itong dalawang magkapatid. So this one, itong organism na ito, na nasa baba, itong organism na to, ang tawag sa kanya ay isang inbred. Which means uh, it is a product of inbreeding na nanggaling siya sa uh, same lineage or say, sa isang pamilya. Para. Tapos if you will notice uh, yung kanyang genetics ay double na small letter A. Kapag meron tayo nakikita ang double na, double na small letter A, that is a recessive allele. Which means it it uh, it is not that desired. So most specific, uh, most of the time, ang mga inbred ay mas mababa or mas hindi sila hindi sila kanais-nais. Parang gano'n. Mas ma mas hindi okay yung mga quality traits nila. So it's either mas maliit sila o kaya mayroong deformities sa kanilang katawan, yung mga ganun. Okay? So that is in breed. Next, we have cross breeding. So in cross breeding naman, it is uh, merely the crossing crossing of two organisms two unrelated organisms so it is from different breeds it is from different breeds varieties or population so that is cross breeding so if this is breed number 1 and this is breed number 2 so let's use an example for uh, beef for beef for cattle so konare this is brahman Brahman is a breed of a cattle. This is Angus. So this one is the cross breed, which is Brangus. So that's cross breeding. Uh, breeding or mating two individuals from two different breeds or varieties or populations. And of course, this is not only true for animals, but this is also true for plants. So that is crossbreeding. And of course, we have hybrid. 
Yung hybrid naman, para rin siyang crossbreeding. But here, uh, it says that when two animals of the same species mate, their offspring get 50% of their genes from each parent. So, it is just like, uh, para rin siyang crossbreeding, pero yung hybrid is the organism itself. So, katulad dito, lion to tiger, ang kanyang hybrid is this one, which is liger. If you are familiar with liger. Yeah. Ayun yung mga tinatry nila. Yung breeding na to, uh, yung hybrid, pwede rin siya sa fisheries. Mamaya, meron ako i-discuss na na principle or project ng Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources na nag-hybrid sila ng dalawang tilapia. Ayan. So, i-discuss kayo naman sa fisheries. So, that's hybrid. Halos same rin sila ng crossbreed. <clears throat> okay? So, number 10. In what age does improved breed of swine reach puberty? In what age? So, A, uh, five to seven months, B, six to eight months, uh, C, four to six months, or letter D, eight to ten months. The answer is letter B, which is six to eight months. So again, nandun ito sa, uh, nandun dapat ito sa inyong uh, reviewer or sa inyong uh, isang sheet ng pad paper na nandun yung mga values, mga numerical values, para mas maduin yung review. So, ayan. Tama yung 6 to 8 months. Ngayon, let's discuss uh, briefly kung ano nga ba yung puberty. So, just same through with humans. So, puberty starts on the moment in which the animal turns an adult. So, kapag sarabing turns an adult, it turns sexually mature and fertile. So, that is the start of puberty. Ito na. <clears throat> and dito yung start ng puberty. So, in the sow, or kapag sinabing sow, ito yung babaeng uh, pig, di ba? So, this normally happens when she is between 5.5 to 8 months old. So, that is the range. So, in the boar, or yung lalaki naman na baboy, the age range is more or less similar, although maybe a little bit higher, which is 6 to 9 months so again, take note of these values. Kapag sa sow or sa uh, babaeng baboy, ang kanyang puberty starts or happens in uh, in between 5.5 to 8 months old. Whereas sa born naman, it is longer or farther, higher yan, uh, which is 6 to 9 months. So, so in those uh, values uh, in those values in those periods uh, doon nagsisimula ang puberty so bakit mahalagang alam to ng isang animal breeder or bakit alam dapat to ng isang farm manager para alam niya kung kailan uh, kung kailan magiging productive yung farm niya kailan pwedeng ipagmate yung dalawang hayop ganyan so that is something that uh, a farm manager needs to know Okay. <clears throat> okay, so before we move to this uh, item, let's uh, let's again have a five minute break. So if you will if you notice we are having five minute breaks after every 25 minutes of discussion. Ayun para makapag-rest din kayo kasi alam ko na kapag kapag dire-diretsuhin natin itong session hanggang alas 5 baka kapag nasa item number 15 na tayo or ano, baka wala na kayong gana. ba? So, let's have a five-minute break. During the five-minute break, you can uh, just breathe sa, sa labas ng bahay nyo, lumayo sa computer, tumayo, uninom, mag-CR, yung mga ganun, kumain. So, let's have a five-minute break.
Okay, so let us move further. I hope na nakatulong ang five minute break na yun. Right. So number 11, uh, which of the following environmental conditions is not required for a successful incubation of egg? So alin daw dyan ang hindi required para sa successful incubation of egg? Again, uh, ano pala, uh, for the newcomer, you can direct message dito yung mga answers mo for the questions or you can just take it uh, on your uh, personal note. Ayan. Para of course, makapag-practice then along the way. So yan, so which of the following is not required? A, uh, temperature, B, humidity, C, egg turning, or letter D, salinity. So for this one, the answer is letter D which is salinity. So if you will notice, ang yung first three ay napaka-involved or napaka, anong tawag dito? Kailangan kapag nasa incubation ka. Kasi kapag incubation, di ba, merong specific doon na temperature na kailangan i-maintain. Di ba? Humidity, humidity rin. And of course, yung three, meron ding turning of the egg. Yung salinity, it is the odd one out. Dapat, di ba? So, kasi pag salinity, uh, most of the time nasa tubig yan. Di ba? So, more probably, that could be more associated sa fisheries. Di ba? Or sa soil science. Ganun. So, ayan yung mga environmental conditions na, uh, na ay, ayan yung mga fields na mas related ng salinity. Okay. So, ito yung proseso ng pag-incubate na chicken eggs. So, incubating chicken eggs is a 21-day process and requires an egg incubator to help control temperature, humidity, and egg turning. So, this is according to Corina Mills' uh, website. So, if for day one, ayan, setting the eggs, which means ilalagay mo yung eggs sa, sa incubator, sa loob. From day one to day 18, imagine that is 18 days, na ito turn mo yung egg. So, i hindi lang dapat siya isang position. Dapat tinaturn mo siya. Ayan. So, 18 days yun of turning the eggs. From day 7 to day 10, uh, pwede ka mag-conduct ng candling of eggs. So, kapag sinabing candling, mamaya i-discuss natin yan. And from day 18 to 21, pre-hatching. So, during those uh, days, ang mangyayari na doon ay may mga ilan na siguro na lalabas na yung chick dun sa eggs. Yeah. And of course, at day 21, it is expected na lahat na ng chicks ay mag-hatch. Lahat na ng egg ay mag-hatch. So, let's go to candling. So, ito yung uh, picture ng candling na ginagawa. This is from uh, Brinsea Incubation Specialist. So kapag sinabing candling, it is the act of shining a light through an egg. So pwedeng gumamit lang ng flashlight o kaya naman merong mga anong tawag dito, specialized na equipments para mag-candle, mag-candling. Mag so yung mga specialized na equipments ay karaniwang nasa bigger farms. Sa mga farms talaga who are producing uh, a lot of eggs or a lot of chicks. Ayan. So, doon ginagamit yung specialized equipment. Pero, you can also use uh, flashlight. Ganyan. So, ayan siya. So, kung makikita nyo from day one, parang wala pang masyado na nangyayari. Tapos, from yung day three, may mga nakikita na kayong parang veins. Diba? Tapos, nag, nag develop na itong mga to. And I observe na parang development dyan. Ayan, hanggang maging dark na siya. So kapag dark na siya, it means lumalaki na yung uh, chick dun sa loob. Lumala lumalaki na yung embryo. Ayan. Hanggang sa day 21 na uh, lumabas na siya. 
So that is the purpose of candling. Para malaman mo kung ready na ba yung uh, egg. Okay? So number 12, uh, which kind of animals has bulk foods as basic diet? Bulk foods as basic diet. So A, a fowl, B, aquatic animal, C, ruminants, or letter D, swine. Okay? Mukhang perfect ni Ma'am ano, Ma Rachel. <laughs> Nag-aral na to si Ma'am Rachel. Okay, tama. The answer is letter C, which is ruminants. So, kapag sinabi natin ruminants, kaya nila kailangan ng bulk food. So, kapag sinabi natin bulk foods from the term itself, marami. Like, a punong puno ng nutrition. So, yung bulk foods na yon, basic diet pa lang nila. Bakit? Kasi they have four stomachs. Nanas silang apat na stomach. So, kailangan nila na mas maraming uh, foods. Okay? So, let us discuss one by one kung ano yung mga compartment ng stomach na yon. So, Una, meron tayong tinatawag na rumen. So take note of this. Rumen, reticulum, omasum, and abomasum. So those are the four uh, chambers or four stomachs na isang ruminant. Ang example pala ng ruminant is ito, yung nasa illustration, cattle, and, the, and also sheep. So ruminant doon ang sheep. Sheep. Cattle. Ayan ang mga examples ng ruminants. Okay? So, let us go to first the rumen. So, dito, ayan, ang rumen, ito ang largest stomach compartment. So, if you can see from the illustration dito sa gilid, ang rumen, para sobrang laki niya, di ba? Kasi it can house 25 gallons or more na water o kaya naman materials. So, siya yung pinakamalaki. Thus, ang kanyang purpose ay mag-store or mag-hold ng vat for feed. Okay? So, dahil siya ay malaking space, doon na pupunta or doon na store ang mga kinakain ng, uh, ng baka or ng ating mga ruminants. Okay? So, the reticulum, so this is the rumen. Ngayon naman, ang reticulum, it is a pouch-like structure in the forward area of the body. So, kung makikita nyo, ayan, yung number two. Ayan. Ito ang reticulum. Itong portion na to. So, that's the reticulum. It is a pouch-like structure in the forward area of the body, close to the heart. The tissues in the reticulum form a network similar to a honeycomb. So it is uh, also known as the honeycomb. So kapag sa let, merong tinanong na uh, which part of the stomach of ruminants looks like a honeycomb, the answer is reticulum. So heavy or dense feed and metal objects eaten by the cow drop into this compartment. So dito na pupunta. Siyempre, ang mga hayop naman, wala naman silang like consciousness or uh, rational, uh, rational thinking, di ba? So pwede silang makakain ng mga other objects, mga foreign objects such as nails, yung mga yan. So doon, doon na pupunta sa reticulum yung mga uh, bagay na yun, yung mga other or mga foreign objects that are being ingested by our uh, ruminants. Ayan. So, sa reticulum. So, again, yung rumen, it is the largest. Ayan, largest siya. Tapos, ginagamit sa storage. Ang reticulum naman, uh, ang, ang itsura niya is parang honeycomb. Tapos, doon na pupunta ang mga uh, uh, dense feed at metal objects being eaten. So, next naman is Umesum. So, ang umesum naman, it is a globe-shaped structure containing leaves of tissue like pages in, the, in a book. 
So, ito, ito yung uh, if you know yeah. if you know yung tuwalya na yung nasa pinapaitan ba yun? Uh, nasa pinapaitan. Meron mga tuwa, yung tuwalya. If, if alam nyo yung term na tuwalya in the ano, sa, sa uh, luto-luto. Ito yun. So, umayisong yun. So, it is a globe-shaped structure containing leaves of tissue like pages in the in a book. So, ang trabaho naman na umayisong is that it absorbs water and other substances. So, again, yung rumen, ito yung sa storage, yung reticulum, doon na pupunta. Para siyang filter. Para filter yung reticulum. Kasi doon na pupunta yung mga metal na mga objects, di ba? Then yung omesum, ito na yung nag-start na yung absorption ng water and other substances from digested contents. And, of course, we have the abomesum. Abomesum is the only compartment lined with glands. So ito na yung tinatawag na true stomach. Ito na yung true stomach. So this is similar to the stomach that we have as humans. So ito na yun. Kasi dito na nagre-release ng hydrochloric acid or HCl. Diba? May HCl sa stomach ng tao. And digestive enzymes. Para magamit na yung uh, nutrients na kinakain ng ruminants. Needed to break down feeds. Abomasum is similar to a non-ruminant stomach, like the stomach that you and me have. Okay. So again, we have rumen, reticulum, omasum, and abomasum. All right. Number 13. So ito, which is referred to as the hard covering of a seed. Hard covering of a seed. A, endosperm. B, testa. C, flesh. May internet connection is unstable. So magpapatay muna ako ng video. Flesh or letter D, cotelidol. The answer is letter B, which is testa. So here is an illustration on the parts of the seed together with their some functions. So, in this illustration, makikita natin na merong monocot at dicot. Monocotelidon, from the term itself, di isa lang ang kanyang cotelidon. Ang dicot naman ay dalawa, katulad nito. So, an example of a monocot is the corn seed. So, corn seed, uh, mais. Yung naman sa daikot ay mga bean seed. So bean seed, uh, pwede yung munggo, ano pa ba yung mga beans? Sitaw, yung mga yan. So those are examples of daikotelidons. So ito yung mga parts nila. If you can uh, look at the illustration, in monocot seeds, basically they only have three major seed parts, which are endosperm, seed coat, and embryo. So yung embryo natin, it develops into a new plant. So basically, this one is, uh, ito yung nagiging leaves natin. Ito yung lumalaki na leaves ng isang corn. Yung stem at saka leaves ng isang corn. Ayan yun. So the endosperm stores or reserve, ay stores yung mga reserved foods. So it stores endosperm. Diyan kumukuha ng nutrients ang seed para gamitin sa kanyang paglaki. Kasi in order for a seed to germinate and to grow, kailangan niya ng reserved food. Kailangan niya ng pagkain para lumaki. Same through with us, humans. Diba? So, ganun din sa seed. Kailangan din nila ng food. So, uh, yung food na yun ay makikita sa endosperm. And of course, we have the seed coat. In a seed coat, Ito yung nagpo-protecta sa seed. From the term itself, it protects the seed. Coat. Diba? Coat. Kaya siya coat kasi nagpo-protecta siya. So that is in the case of a monocot. On the other hand, we have naman yung dicot. 
So if you can notice, mas maraming parts ang uh, dicotyledon. doon. Mas maraming is specific, di ba? So you can notice na sa seed coat, divided pa siya sa dalawa, which are testa and tegmen. So yung testa, ayun yung mas malaking part dyan, yung mas green. So siya yung mas outer. If you, if you will zoom in, ayan siya. Yung tegmen naman, ayun yung susunod na layer ng seed coat for dicotyledon. So for the embryo, for the seed embryo, ayan, meron siyang limang parts or subparts, which are the plumule. Yung plumule, ito yung nagde-develop, if you can see, ayan na yung parang may dahon dyan. Or dyan nagmumula yung, ano, yung dahon. The epicotyl. Epicotyl, ayun yung part sa taas, from the term itself, epi. Epicotyl, nasa taas. So, nasa taas siya ng cotyledon. O, epi, taas, cotyl, cotyledon. Nasa taas ng cotyledon. Ang hypocotyl naman is nasa baba. From the term itself, again, yung prefixes natin, hypo. Hypo, baba. Cotyl, cotyledon. So, nasa baba ng cotyledon. We also have the radical. Yung radical, yung radical ay uh, ito yung nag-grow into a seed. Tapos yung cotyledon, ayun yung cotyledon. Nawala ba? Oh. Wait lang. I think nawala ako. Okay. So, mag-share content ulit ako. Oops. Alright. So, yun. Uh, Saan na tayo? Embryo. So, kutili doon. Ayun yung ito. Yung nandun sa gitna. So, ang nangyayari dyan, kapag nag-germinate yan, kapag lumaki yan, try ko mag-drawing. Ang nangyayari dyan is, kunwari, ito yung roots. Tapos, ito yung stem. Yung Yan. Yan. So, kapag ipaparalelize natin siya, yung plumule ay nandito na. Epicotyl is ito, nasa taas ng cotyledon. E, diba ito yung cotyledon natin? So, ito yung cotyledon. So, ang epicotyl is epi, nasa taas. Ito namang nasa baba. Itong part na to, ang tawag naman dyan ay hypocotyl. So, dito na yung hypocotyl. And ito yung naging radical. Ito yung radical. Naging na siyang kalipos. So ganyan yung nangyayari. Okay. So meron nag-ask uh, sa ating sa direct message. If sa option po, nasa choices ang testa and seed coat, which is the outer covering po. So if nandoon silang dalawa sa choices, pwede kang pumunta sa mas specific or nakadepende rin. Kunwari, ang nasa, nasa choices yung dalawa. Tapos ang question is, which is referred to as the hard covering of a dicotyledon seed? So kapag nakamention yun, 
pwede mong ilagay yung test stock. Or, tapos kapag monocotilido naman, sabi, you can go with seed coat. Pero, kapag ganun lang, kapag, which is hard, refer to the hard covering of the seed, tapos nandun yung dalawa, siguro mas better na pumunta ka sa mas specific. Okay, so next. So ito, number 14, let's go to soil science. So it occurs when wind and water remove the topsoil and expose saline or saline or sodic soils. So alin, A, tunnel erosion, B, scalding, C, real erosion, or letter D, sheet erosion. So for this one, the answer is letter B, which is scalding. So here are the different uh, definitions of each type of erosion. So this one is actually in the field of soil science. So we have different types of erosion. Uh, A, we have tunnel erosion. Yeah, tingnan natin. So sa tunnel erosion, nagkakaroon ng removal of subsoil when water penetrates through a soil crack or a hole where a root has decayed. The soil disperses and is carried away with the flow to leave a small tunnel. So from the definition itself, kapag tunnel erosion, ang nagiging resulta ay merong small tunnel. So you can also take note na it is the removal of subsoil. Ngayon, ang scalding, ito na yung answer natin, is meron siyang agents. Ito yung kanyang agents. Ay, uh, ang agent ng tunnel erosion ay water. Diba? Ang agent naman ng scalding is wind and water. Tapos, nire-remove lang niya yung topsoil. Removal of topsoil. So, tunnel erosion, removal of subsoil, scalding, Ang element ay wind at saka water. Ayun yung mga agents of erosion. Tapos, nire-remove niya ang topsoil. Okay? So, here, raindrop impact alone can result in large amount of soil being moved. However, water or wind moving over the surface will remove more soil and contribute to sheet, rill, and jolly erosion. So, these three are also other types of erosion or more specific more specific types of erosion. So, andito sa baba yung dalawa. Ayan. So, tingnan natin ang real erosion. So, real erosion occurs when run of water, again, the agent is water, forms small channels. So, ang resulta naman dito is channels, small channels. As it concentrates down a slope. So, kapag real erosion, meron siyang specific or measurement, which is 0 0.3 meter deep. Tapos, ito na yung isa. We also have here the gully erosion. Ang gully erosion naman ay kapag parehas rin sa real erosion, kaso mas malalim. Deeper than 0 0.3 meters. Ayun ang gully erosion. Okay, so sa real, er sa real erosion, water pa rin. Nag ang nagiging resulta ay small channels. Tapos pa, pa baba, down a slope, sabi niya, di ba? Tapos kapag yun ay 0 0.3 meter deep, that is called, or that is considered as real erosion. Kapag mas lumalim pa doon, siguro nakalagay uh, 0 0.5 meters. So that is already considered as gully erosion. So moving forward, we also have sheet erosion. So sheet erosion occurs when a, a tiny, when a thin layer of topsoil is removed over a whole hillside product and may not be readily noticed. So for sheet erosion, it could be caused by wind as well. Wind. Ayan, kasi ang sabi, thin layer lang. Ang... Ang, ang ating keyword 
kapag sheet erosion, thin layer of topsoil. Thin layer from the term itself, sheet. Di ba yung sheet is para sheet of paper? Sobrang nipis lang nun, di ba? So, kapag thin layer of topsoil is removed, that is sheet erosion. Again, as a review, before we take another five-minute break, ayan, yung tunnel erosion natin, removal of subsoil, ang agent of erosion ay water, tas ang kanyang uh, ano tawag dito? result ay mga small tunnels. Kaya siya tunnel erosion. So, ang scalding naman, when wind and water erosion, or yung mga agents na yon is nire-remove ang top soil. So, ang other terms ng other subtypes under scalding ay sheet, rill, and gully erosion. Kapag sinabing rill erosion, water ang agent, tas ang produkto or, or ang resulta ay small channels na pababa, down a slope. Tapos kapag real erosion, tatandaan na 0.3 meters deep. Kapag mas lumalim doon, ang tawag na doon ay gully erosion. On the other hand, ang sheet erosion naman ay thin layer of topsoil lang ang na tatanggal. Thin layer, sheet, which is manipes. Ayan, kaya ayun na yung clue natin kapag sa sheet erosion. So, uh, we have already tackled a lot of concepts. Again, let's take a five-minute break. You can breathe or you can review. Kayo, kayo na bahala siya. Let's rest for a while and uh, we'll be back after five minutes. I hope you're still okay. If you have uh, any questions or what, you can just uh, direct message me here at the chat section. Okay?
natin. Ayan. I-off ko na yung video ko kasi much unstable yung internet. So, welcome ulit sa mga bagong dating. Sa bagong dating. Ayan, Ma'am Gretchen. Uh, so, for this, we are just reviewing. So, I, I think uh, we will be posting a recording of this one. So, para makahabol for anong tawag dito? Makahabol for the previous items. Ayan. Okay? So, let's continue with number 15. So, which chicken disease is caused by a virus and with no known treatments? So, chicken disease, virus. So, A, avian malaria. B, Newcastle disease. C, fever or letter D, coxidiosis. So, Pwede pala kayong magsagot dito sa direct message or you can also take note of your answer in your personal notes. Ayan, so pwede rin yan. Kayo bahala. Basta ang mahalaga, you will be reviewing this session. You will also be uh, taking notes. Ayan. So we discourage, ano pala, uh, ano tawag dito, taking screenshots lang, ganun. Kasi alam naman natin lahat na kapag nag screenshot screenshot na lang tayo, hindi rin natin binabalikan yung mga yan. Okay? So, the answer for this one is yes, tama kayo. The answer is letter B, which is Newcastle disease. So, again, uh, let's uh, look at the different choices. Kung ano yung mga yun. So, first is yung avian malaria. So, avian malaria is a mosquito-borne disease of birds caused by a protozoan parasite. So, dun pa lang, na, na cause siya ng protozoan parasite, hindi na siya answer kasi ang tinatanong ay virus. The, the question is asking for a virus. Tapos, walang known treatment. So, dun pa lang, if we know that avian malaria is caused by a protozoan parasite, then we could easily cancel that out from our choices. Right? So, another uh, factor na ipang-cancel dun sa avian malaria is that meron siyang treatment. Ayan. So, hindi siya caused by a virus, hindi rin siya walang, ay, meron din siyang treatment. Kaya ang question ay caused by a virus, tsaka no no treatment. Okay? Yung coxidiosis is a parasitic disease, once again, uh, of the intestinal tract of animals caused by a coccidian protozoa. So it is uh, again caused by a protozoa. So this disease spreads from one animal to another by contact with infected feces or ingestion of infected tissue. So the most popular treatment for toxidiosis is amprolium wherein it blocks the parasite's ability to uptake and multiply. The next one is fever. So of course, meron din namang ano dito? Uh, treatment for that. So that cancels that out. And of course, we have your answer na to, which is a Newcastle disease. So unfortunately, a Newcastle disease ay wala pang specific na treatment. It is a highly infectious disease affecting poultry and other birds. Yeah. So disease is caused by infection with virulent strains of the Newcastle disease virus. So this one, it is caused by a virus and at the same time it also don't have any treatment. Kaya ito yung answer natin. So another one, this could also be in the choices. Ayan. So this is an additional information. Is yung Marek's disease or MD. So MD or foul paralysis is a very common disease of chickens caused by a herpes virus. So it is also caused by a virus and at the same time, sabi rin ay wala rin treatment pa sa Marek's disease. So ang um, suggestion dito is that diseased birds should be promptly removed from the flock and humanely destroyed. Why is this so? Kasi there is a possibility na yung disease na yun is magkalat pa across your farm. Dun sa inyong Farm. So if you are doing mass production of broilers or, or layers na mga chicken, ang 
possible nun is kumalat lang siya, tapos malugi ka as a farm manager or as a farm owner. Okay? So that's number 15. So number 16, let's have this one. So let's go to the field of agricultural marketing or yung mga marketing strategies natin. So which does not belong to the four P's of marketing. So A, is it product? B, price? C, place? Or letter D, purchase? Which does not belong to the four P's of marketing? So the correct answer is letter D which is purchase. So purchase ang hindi kasama sa four piece of marketing. So here is a simple illustration on the four piece. So first we have place, product, price, and promotion. So in marketing, kailangan natin i-consider itong apat na factors na ito. Una, yung place. Magtatayo ka ba ng isang business or ng isang enterprise sa isang lugar na hindi gumagamit ng produktong gusto mong ibenta? Diba? So, of course, hindi. Diba? So, you need to consider the place of your uh, venture, the place where you will establish your business or your enterprise. Next is yung produkto. Ano yung gusto mong i-offer? Ano yung gusto mong i-offer sa community? Ano ang gusto mong i-offer na innovation sa uh, mundo? Ang produkto mo ba ay kailangan ng mga tao? Meron ba siyang lugar sa market? Ayun. So those are things that you need to ask yourself if you are considering the product. Another one is yung price. Yung price, uh, of course, you need to strategize kung anong klaseng uh, pricing strategy ang gagamitin mo. Gagamit ka ba ng bundle strategy? na pagsasamahin mo yung dalawang produkto na hindi masyadong binibili yung isa or gagamit ka lang ng markup or may tubo lang. Tumari, may tubo ng 10 pesos. Ganyan. Diba? So, those are things that you also need to consider. Of course, along with this, meron ding interaction yung price tsaka yung place. Una, when you are doing your market analysis, so, of course, kailangan mong i-analyze kung sino yung mga nasa market mo. Sino yung mga nasa, nasa lugar kung nasaan ka. Kaya ba nilang i-afford yung presyo that you will be offering? So that is another consideration. And of course, promotion. Promotion, uh, it encompasses yung mga strategies na gagawin mo to advertise your product. Uh, tulad ng mag, magbibigay ka ba ng mga flyers, or mag-Facebook ads ka ba? TikTok ads? Paano mo ipapasikat yung produkto mo? So, ayun ang isa pang konsiderasyon sa marketing. So, again, it is the place, product, price, and promotion. And of course, yung interaction ng bawat uh, elements na yan. Okay? Okay. 